under the spotlight today. Someone who's been here since the very beginning. Uh, so who's first up? It's our Nadia. It's really strange because you know how I love talking, but it's really I know, weird. we kind of distance ourselves. <laughs> no. so, um, people are going to come back from the break and think that I've suddenly started <laughs> smelling. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to delve deep into your delve. past, but having seen you with Reggie James, you can't wait to be a granny, can you? Oh, Groody, it's my new word. Groody. Groody. Groody to be a granny. Yeah, you're uh. there. But listen, we we're going to say, you have spoken so much on the show about, you know, particularly your dad, because, you know, you tell these fabulous stories and it's like your dad in habits you you know mm. and, and you're clearly so proud of that and love it so much now were you always like that as a kid because I suppose you must have been quite different within your community strangely it's weird because I grew up in South London and I was I had no problem with being half Arabic where you would think I think maybe now children nowadays might feel a bit worried about that and what people would think and, and maybe people did then but I was just oblivious I was just so proud of my dad I said, oh, my dad's Arabic and you know we eat whole lamb and you've got to come around to my house and and my parents would hold these amazing parties we just lived in a in a very modest um you know uh semi uh, but they would transform the house because my dad was an actor and they would transform the house every so often into like an arabian tent they would just they just got silks from the market mm. and they would t turn it into a tent and we'd have these amazing parties and i, I just thought we were just i just thought we were really cool <laughs> but I mean, I probably. But, but I mean, I remember when we used to invite friends over, and they'd say things like, um, "I say, oh, you know, do you want to come for a sleepover?" And they'd say things like, "Will your dad make us eat sheep's eyeballs?" Because that's all anybody <laughs> thought. Arabic. I went, "Yeah, <laughs> breakfast." And then I'd say that to my dad, and my dad, I'd say, "Dad, you know, let's really wind up." He'd go, "So." You have come for sheep's eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> With or without garlic. <laughs> and, go, and then he'd take great joy in just giving them a bottle of rice crispies in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but did you but you were different though? Did you did you know you were different because you had mixed race parents? Yeah, but I, I did, but I was just really proud of it. Yeah. I was just really proud. And maybe that was because my dad was. So it was never mm. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was just wasn't a problem for me. Mm. I mean, the problem for me was that my dad was an actor and he would often be out of work, as actors are, and so he'd answer the door in his dressing gown and I used to pretend he was the lodger because I was so embarrassed. <laughs> and did you always want to be a an actor? No, I always wanted to be a nurse because I used to love... Like, if somebody was sick, I would run and catch it in my hands. And so I was like, I'm a natural. I like, I'm not seeing anyone else doing this. And, like, if somebody was unwell, it was my favourite thing. To, I used to get cloths right when I was tiny and I loved bringing people's temperature down. So I was absolutely going to be a nurse. And all the family were, like, a bit uncomfortable with it, but nobody said. And then um, I was in secondary school and I did a play... And my mum was... I'm great friends with my mum now, but my mum was a very strict mum and not effusive and never gave any compliments. The biggest compliment she could give you was like, oh, well, I think there'll be plenty... I think there'll be plenty of other people not looking great, so you probably look OK. That would be a compliment <laughs> for my mum. So, anyway, I did this play and I was playing a man and I had a drawn-on moustache and I didn't realise I was funny. Anyway, so, you know, when you're a kid and you're rehearsing, anyway, did this play, got huge laughs, came off stage... And my mum was standing in the hall with this look on her face I'd never seen before and she just went, you were really funny, you were really good. And that second, I was like, I'm going to be an actress. It was literally that so second. It's got nothing to do with the fact that your dad was an actor or anything like that. Were well, you no, inspired I, by him? Or? Well, no, actually. It's funny because I used to... Every summer my dad would do a movie and we would go away with him and on location... Not, not like a star. He's what we call a job in actor. And we would go to all these amazing places and everyone always say, are you going to be an actor just like your dad? And you know how much you hate that when you're a child? So I'd go, no, no, I'm not going to be... An so I made a point, I'm not going to be an actress, I'm going to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. And it was very glamorous, I mean... It was amazing going on these sets. And I remember at nine years old, my dad, this big movie with Sean Connery, and I had this, I, and I was absolutely convinced I was going to marry him. I was absolutely <laughs> convinced. So, you know, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, a, it was an unusual... But you did target. go to stage school. I did, because after my mum gave me this face, which then made me want to be an actress, I was like, I've got to leave my school. I've got to leave my school. I'm going to go to Italia Conti, because I'd seen fame. So I thought, what's my <laughs> way? Oh, oh. So I went to Sally Conti. And so I made this decision that I was going to go. So I went really early in the morning when Mum and Dad, I knew they would just be waking up. And I went in and I said, 
I've, something's happened and I've got to go to stage school. And they were like, right, OK, because so this private, private, very academic school. And I said, and if I don't go, I'm going to throw myself out of that window there. <laughs> and my mum said, God, this is telling us something. Um, so they agreed to me to do the, for me to do the audition. And they told me afterwards, we agreed because we knew you wouldn't get in. We knew you didn't have a hope because hundreds and hundreds of kids would audition for this yeah. school, and, and I got in. Amazingly, God knows how, because I sang Oh Bloody, Oh Blada, you know that song? Oh, God, yeah. yeah! But I forgot the words, so I sang <laughs> Oh Bloody, Oh Blada for a whole minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, with all that drama, is that how you found your way into EastEnders? Um, well, I was, I was what you call, again, a jobbing actress. I used to just do these tours and I'd be in the back of a bus and I'd do all this work for no money because I just loved being in the theatre and I just wanted to be... And it was an amazing time. But I was really, really broke when I got EastEnders, properly broke. Like, I would walk along the street, kicking the rubbish around, looking for a ten pence so I could buy... And I would just buy wow. potatoes. Well, don't feel too sorry for me, I love potatoes. <laughs> so I would just eat <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> and um, one day I just <laughs> called up my agent. I said, listen, something's got to happen. I've got to do something... Like a soap. And he went, well, yeah, that's what everyone wants to do. I was like, oh, right, right. I said, oh, something like EastEnders. Now, these things don't happen, you know. And he said, um, well, you know, it's pie in the sky. Yeah, if something comes up for EastEnders, I'll send you for an audition. And how bizarre, I got an audition the next week. Just oh. by sheer fluke, they were looking for somebody, I suppose, a bit like me. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I would have thought that with all your dad's contacts that he would have been able to open doors for you, but it doesn't work like that. It, it doesn't really work like that because he was... Yeah, I mean, I was in that vibe. And I suppose with theatre, he helped me in. But to get into something like a soap, you know... Yeah. And I went for the audition and it, this was like... For me, it felt like life or death. Mm. And then that, they sent, brought me back for a callback and I had to... I remember I had to do... had to learn a piece and I had to be in Pat Butcher's sitting room. Mm. And I imagined it was going to be enormous, but it's tiny. Mm. And I had to do this whole really dramatic acting piece to Pat Butcher's empty chair oh. with oh. five cameras on I me. I think we've actually yeah. got a clip of certainly oh, yeah. one of... If it's not your first scene, it's a very early one. There we go. Oh, yeah. Was oh, that... yeah, that's me. Oh, so was my... this your first scene? Yes, that was the first time that I came in. I, don't, I, didn't re I didn't remember that it was with Dean. Oh, look at me, I'm so wooden. Oh, what was it God. like? What was it like you working with all these big stars and being... That's your first... Well, th the thing was, you know, I just didn't believe I would get it. And then when, the, when I heard that I'd got it, I was, I was hysterical. I was just... Cos I wasn't going to have Christmas that year or anything. I was so broke. And then I'd always been... Oh, my God, it's so weird saying that. I'd always been, cos I'd been a theatre actress and I'd come from a big family, I'd always just got on really well with people really, really easily. I'd come in like, oh, right, what were you all doing? What's this? But EastEnders wasn't like that and it was really... I think I was... In that it wasn't I was friendly. very lonely. I was very lonely the whole time that I was in there, but I was... I got incredible fame. All I'd ever wanted to be was rich and famous and within weeks I realised that's not a thing. But was it a kind of overnight change in your life? Oh, I mean, they sat me down, they said, what we have to do is we have to put your hair back like this and you have to stay like that for six months, no matter what scene you do, because we have to do everything in close-up and the audience has to know every single part of your face as if they were, you were their family. That's what they used to say to all the soap all the wow. new actors. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, my dad was an actor. Julia was very famous at the time and absolutely fabulous. I don't know what fame is like, but it's nothing, nothing like EastEnders fame. That was just... At that time, it was crazy. Um, and, Nadia, just to, to pick you up on something you said, that you went into EastEnders, you know, it was what you wanted, you were broke beforehand, and so this was, you know, the big role. But you were lonely when you were there. I was lonely. It was funny, cos I remember on my first day, the wardrobe man saying, whatever you do, don't tell those other actresses out there you've got new clothes. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and it's because most of the characters are already established. They're in a cafe, they're in a bar, so they wear the clothes from stock. But my character came in like that, and she was a bit like that, you know, and she had, <laughs> a, like, she had all my new Karen Millen clothes. So, and because I was very nervous, I think I put across... I was, like, in my character the whole time. So... From my perspective, these people didn't really like me and weren't really friendly to me. But I think, actually, with hindsight and maturity, I think they probably thought the same of me. Yeah. So I always felt like I was nibbling around the edge so of everything. So who were the big names, then, when you went Oh, in? the big names was Martine, Coltney, Coltney, um, <laughs> Martine, Patsy, you know, Phil and Grant, Barbara, you know, Peggy. All, I mean, it was massive. Mm. At that time, it was 20 million. These people were mega stars. We would go on a night out and girls would be running, screaming down the street. It was, it was 
phenomenal, the wow. fame that they all had. And to walk into the Vic on your first, your first time at all the regulars are there and they're all looking at you and sussing you out and wondering why you've got a new suit from Karen Millen, mm -hmm. even though you haven't told them you have. So it was really, really... I felt a bit uncool. I felt like a bit of a geek. I felt like the theatre nerd. You know, I'd go on these nights out and go, oh, you know, the EastEnders cast, and I was just felt a bit silly. And the first time I ever went out, I overdrank tequila by mistake because I was really insecure. <laughs> and I that fell no over mistake. and fell all the way down the stairs and I remember them walking over me, looking at me like, oh, well, who is this woman? So I just never felt like I'd got the right... Right step. And was it Phil Mitch? I know it's not Phil Mitch, or what's it? Steve McFadden Steve that, yeah. that was kind of your love interest. One of my love interests. I had many. Oh, yeah. did you? Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember once we were doing this scene and it was, wasn't going very well. And, um, and, and Steve actually said, I mean, why would I be going out with her? <laughs> and, and I remember the director saying, well, have a look at her. But, me, because I was so insecure, I thought, yeah, why would he be going out with me? It was a really... And so all those things, I used to go home and I would drive myself crazy with what I thought people were thinking of oh, me. I was just no. young and just, so just paranoid. you had a dream job, but it wasn't a happy time. Oh, no, I wasn't happy at all when I was in EastEnders. I wasn't happy. No, oh. I wasn't happy. And um, it was... I was happy because I had some sort of success... But fame and money isn't what you think it is. And I, mm. and I realised that my dreams were quite shallow. And, and so I wanted to stay in, but I also wanted to leave, you know. And then, of course, you know, I had very... A real tragedy happened when I was there. You know, my, my first husband died and it was a truly, truly, truly awful time for everybody. And... Um, and you had to carry on working. <clears throat> well, I had to carry on working, and you know, I was in the middle of a very big storyline, actually. And yeah, and that was really hard because the thing is, when you when somebody dies, so many people have an idea of how you should behave and what you should be. And I remember one day just saying, "Can somebody just give me the book on what I'm supposed to be doing?" Because it's like, oh, I saw her laughing. Oh, I saw her doing this. I saw her doing that. And it was very hard because it was in the spot. Light, you know, mm. I mean, okay, I was a sideline spotlight, but I was still in this, and of course, you can imagine the feeding frenzy from a press with something like that. So it was, it was a truly, truly horrific. I mean, I met you only about a year after I know, that, which I didn't realize until yeah. a long time after that because obviously you were still traumatized. You yeah, know, that's not something you get over in that way. No. So, how did your fellow cast members? respond then to that? Well, I remember it was really funny because Wendy Richards that everybody was scared of, you know, Pauline, you know, and I thought, and I also thought she didn't like me. And one of the first calls that I got was from Wendy Richards, and I'll never forget it. Oh, bless her. And she rang me and she said, I can have a car there, I can have a car there straight away, and you just come, I've got this little flat and this muse, you can come and you can just stay there for as long as you like. And I just thought that was so... I've never forgotten that. Mm. I mean, I didn't take her up because I was really scared of her, but, <laughs> but it was just such a lovely... It was such a lovely thing to do, it really was, so... Yeah. So I'm guessing that leaving EastEnders for a whole host of reasons wasn't the worst thing. Oh, God, no, it wasn't the worst thing at all. It wasn't the worst thing at all. Um, you know, because I thought, oh, well, I'll go back to... I'll go back to, to you know, my theatre and that sort of acting, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or Did... Hollywood? <laughs> well, strangely, all that sort... Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of great things, funny things, yeah. It's, things happen, you know, with movies. I, di I have done movies. Um, I remember... Sorry, I'm a bit thrown by talking about I that. Know, just I, know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. Well, take a pause. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's really strange for me too because we've known each other all these years, twenty years. You and I did that very first show uh, together, and we know each other really, really well. Mm. But it is so odd, you know. Here we are doing this in television, and I kind of thought I knew everything about you, and and you probably. I can see that you are rethinking things in your mm. head here in the moment, and it's such a strange mm. thing in life, like isn't it? This is like therapy in a way, isn't it? What you're doing is going mm. back and looking with a maturer person, life's changed, yeah, looking is. back on life. I mean, mm. that, that, I mean, you know, that is a tragedy. And how do you feel now that, you know, you've come out of that? How well, do you feel? Is, about... I think what you just said there is true. Sitting here talking about all of this, it's... 
You know, just because I don't think about no. my time in EastEnders and I don't think about those insecurities and I don't think about the movies that I turned down because I didn't think I was going to be good enough and the opportunity to go, you know, I was asked to go. All these things I was asked to do and they were all my no's were rooted in, why have these people asked me to do this? I, I have imposter syndrome. I always think someone's going to knock me on the back of my head. I'm terribly sorry, what are you doing in this television yeah. studio? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so it is... But it's a good feeling, too, because I am so much more of a grown-up and I do know where all that cam came from. But Hollywood, Hollywood, you nearly got a part... Well, you were asked to go and audition for Gladiator, weren't you? Well, I was, but where that came oh. from was... Actually, that was... I think that was before EastEnders. I can't remember the timeline. I was doing a movie out in Morocco and, um, and I did this film and it went really well and then... Oh, I don't think I've got enough time to tell the story. Never mind. Oh. Well, I mean, I think, you know, everyone knows what happened. I mean, Russell Crowe got the job, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, you, know, you, you can't win them all, can no, you? you can't win them all. You can't win them all. <laughs> no, yeah. absolutely not.